Hello there. Welcome to the React Masterclass by My Project Ideas. I am Mohit, your tutor. And in this session, we are going to see what are the components and how to use them inside of our project. So these are the points we are going to cover inside of our tutorial. Like what is the component and how to create a use component inside of our React project. We will see the component hierarchy. We will also see the comparison between the functional and the class components. And together with concluding that tutorial. So first of all, see what is a component. So component is anything that is a reusable piece of code that we can use inside of our React project. So notice here, it is a reusable piece of code. So we can use a single component multiple times throughout the whole project. So this approach is also called create once and use everywhere. Components reduce the redundancy of the code and make it very easy to write and manage the code. So redundancy also means the repetition. So you have to write less code and that's why the code is easy to manage too. So now let's just see how to make a component. So in the previous video, we have seen like uh, how to create our first React.js project and update that project. So this was the app.jsx file. So let's run it first. So have you remember this command npm run dev to start this project? If you don't, then don't worry. So on this URL, our project is just started. Okay, as you can see, our project is started. And now we have to go to our project. And now what I will do is uh, I will remove this boilerplate code inside of this return statement. And yes, and also this line too. And uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, Return a div element. Inside this div element, I will type hello. It is just to set up our pro project for the basic needs. So as you can see, the hello is appearing here. Okay, fine. Now it's time to create our component. So where to create our components? Make sure that your components lies within this SRC folder. And inside this SRC folder, let's create a new file called uh, this component. Make sure that the component's name always start from the capital and will follow the camel case. And the extension will be JSX. So let's create a let's create this component. So this component will be a functional component, and we are going to see what is a functional component further ahead. So for that, I will import React from React. And next thing is I will define an arrow function. You can also use a function expression or a simple JavaScript function too. But here it is a best practice. So this component equal an arrow function. And inside of which, okay, I will have a return statement. And inside of this, we will have a div element. And inside of this div element, we will type this component okay fine so our component is defined and also make sure to export this component as default and now our component is, component is exported so congratulations you have made your first component successfully so now we have to use this component so how to do that so now just go to the app.jsx. I will import this file. This component from this component. And now what I will do is I will type here this component. Okay, so we have used it here. Now if I uh, see our project running on the browser, it will just say this component. As you can see, we are successful in using our first component too. And now suppose that this simple component, I have to use it multiple times. So I will copy this line multiple times. 
So now let's just see the browser, how it is reflected. It is reflected like this one. As you can see, you can create it once and use it multiple times. So this was our functional component. And it's now it's time to show you what is a component hierarchy. So component hierarchy, as its name suggests, it is a hierarchy of the components, like a, it's a parent-child relationship between the components. So you can define a parent component and you can use simple other component inside that parent component. And that will be the child component of this parent component. And now we will see how to do that. So I will just remove this line and this line of code and I will just replace it with a text like hello react. And I will also delete this uh, previously made component. And uh, now what we can do is inside this SRC folder, we will create a new folder called Components. It is a usually best practice to create <coughs> the group of components. So now I will make a new file and I will name it as parent parent component and I have already defined this component inside here like parent comp but let's name it parent component so you are not sure how do I do that really fast it is called a snippets there is a react extension for that inside the VS code you can go to the extension and search for the react snippets and you can download that and now you will also be able to use those, those things inside of your project. So inside of this parent component, uh, okay, we have to make another component called child component. Okay, fine. So R A F E. So this was a snippet for the component. And now child component. Okay, fine. As you can see here, here we will import the parent component and we will define the parent component here. And now we will see inside of the browser it is reflected or not. As you can see the parent component is reflected here. So this text is what we have defined inside of our parent component here. So now what we want to do is we want to use this children component or this child component inside of this parent component. So just like you are importing inside of the app.jsx this parent component, you have to do this inside of the parent component. So what we can do is import child component. And what we will do is uh, we'll remove this text and type it again. Parent component is here but just below that we will define child component and now the child component is inside the parent component and inside of the app.jsx there is only parent component so let's see the browser as you can see the parent component is here and below that there is child component so as you can see like uh, you can create a multiple hierarchies or multiple patterns for the components like relationship between the components. So this is the component hierarchy for you. So now it's time to see the difference between the functional and the class components. Let's see. So the functional components you have already seen like we have defined our components in the format of the functional components. So what are the class components? So functional components are new and are widely used inside of the project. And new libraries made for the React are also using the functional components. But on the other hand, the class components are old and were the early implementation for the React paradigm. Functional components make use of functions called hooks for the state management. But inside of the class components, the state management is little bit of tricky, I will say, because it is very complex to define a particular single state for the components. Uh, it is very simpler syntax for the functional components that make them easy to implement inside of the project. Functional component is represented by any function, function expression or arrow function that returns the JSX elements. JSX we have already seen, the HTML like syntax. 
But on the other hand, the class components, their syntax, syntax is little tricky to understand, especially for the state management. The representation for the class components is given by the class that extends the React component and returns the JSX elements. Functional, functional components we can use for all purpose. But inside the render function of the class components, which are still relevant, can be used to define the error boundaries of the projects. And most of the class components are there inside of the legacy co code of the React. So they are not completely obsolete yet. So let me show you how to make a class component also. Class components. I will just remove this thing. And I will type it. Hello React for checking purpose, like if it is working or not, if it is running or not. Okay, fine, it is running. And now we will go to our components folder. Inside of it, I will create a new file called class com. You can name it any anything. So it will be a JSX file. And inside of it, I will import React from React. And now to define the class component. Just make a class and you can assign it name like uh, same as this file class comp that will extend react dot component and inside of the curly braces we will define a render function inside of the render function you will have a return statement inside of the return statement we will define our jsx or a div. Inside div, we will get this is a class component. Define I think. And the next la next and the last thing remaining is to export this thing. Export default class component. Okay, fine. Our class component is defined correctly. Now go to the app.jsx. I will remove this parent component import statement. Instead, I will import this component. Sorry, sorry, not that. Class component from the class comp. And we will define it here. And now we will see if it is reflected in our browser or not. Okay. This is a class component. As you can see, how to create a class component. So you can clearly differentiate between the syntax of the class component and the functional component. So this is how it looks like for the functional component. But this is how it looks like for a, sorry not that, for a class component. The syntax is a little bit tricky to understand. And uh, it is also deprecated and not, not really used in the React for the more complex purposes right now. So yeah. So conclusion, most of the time we will make use of the functional components and rarely any class component. Because most of the libraries are also using the functional components on their code basis. Hooks are used with functional components for the state management. And what is the state management? State management, we will see in the next, next future tutorials. And the components make it easy to write maintainable code as we have uh, discussed it already. So. Thank you for bearing till here and uh, from the next tutorial we are going to see what are the props or properties of a component and how can we make the component dynamic in nature so that uh, we can differentiate the component components based on the data.